And another element that is missing from the Senate Energy Bill, what is known as a renewable electricity standard. This is a law that would require that more of your electricity come from renewable resources, geothermal, solar, wind, for example. Generally speaking, everyone wants more clean energy and everyone wants to become more energy independent. But not everyone is willing to pay higher prices to reach those goals. And that's part of the reason the renewable sector says it now needs more federal help. Well, we're thinking of adding another kilowatt. Four years ago, Arlington resident Monique Hannes decided it was time to change. This was one thing that we could do as a family to make a difference. $25,000 later, the Hannes family had a solar photovoltaic panel system converting the sun's light into electricity and a solar thermal system heating the home's water. A clean energy conversion that she says could pay for itself within 15 years, fueled in part by federal tax incentives. These days, it's a better time. This system is four years old, um, and there's actually, it's a better time to go solar now because of the federal tax ex in incentives. Um, there's a 30% tax credit, which we were able to take advantage of, but at the time it was capped at $2,000. Um, now there's no cap, so that's much more helpful to consumers. And federal policy is crucial for renewable energy on a larger scale as well. Electricity generated by what are called conventional sources, that is coal, natural gas, nuclear, that power is still less expensive than electricity generated by solar and wind. These renewable resources are clean, but both require backup capacity, something to generate power when the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine. Mike Garland heads up Pattern Energy, a leading wind and transmission company. I agree that on the surface, that it appears that some renewables, particularly solar right now, but th those costs are coming down. I would disagree. I'd say with reasonable tax benefits associated with wind that were cost competitive against most of the other resources. And if you add to that any kind of consideration of carbon tax or carbon cost to the environment, to the people and their cars or whatever, you're actually very competitive. Not competitive enough without government help. As diverse as the renewable sector is, generating power from the sun's light, the wind strength, and the earth's heat, all of these want essentially the same policies. A renewable electricity standard forcing utilities to draw more heavily on renewable generation. A carbon cap making it more expensive for companies to supply power derived from coal and to a lesser extent from natural gas. Also tax breaks and flat out cash grants, the government subsidizing a portion of clean energy projects. Six geothermal companies received the tax grant last year. Every single one of those companies is building more projects than they received a grant for. So what the cash grant allowed them to do is immediately buy down their debt. They just built a $100 million power plant. They've got two more right behind it. Well, their balance sheet with $100 million of debt on it is not going to look very good. And today, people are being pretty critical of how much debt any company carries. Just recently, tax breaks and cash handouts in the stimulus package helped build brand new solar fields, wind farms, and geothermal plants. But those incentives are about to expire. I'm sure you've seen the graph of the wind industry's growth, where it shows the up and down roller coaster every time a tax credit expired. Well, what we've seen is five years where the credits have been extended before expiring, and every year the growth has gone up faster. That's what we want to achieve. Now we need to see those credits and the tax grant extended before this year is out to continue that kind of progress. Otherwise, I'm afraid we're right back into the slump. Already the effects are apparent. The wind industry says the number of new wind turbines installed in the U.S. dropped 71 percent during the second quarter of this year from 2009. And the American Wind Energy Association points out that during the first half of this year, new coal plants, the main reason environmental groups want more wind power, those new coal plants exceeded new wind plants for the first time in five years. It's just a, too unknown as to whether the market can support the projects. There'll be some. We'll do some work, and we're very clever at how to work around some of these problems. But the reality is, is when you have your core tax structures falling apart, it's hard to, in a short period of time, recover from that. So the majority of the industry is going to have a very hard time moving forward on new projects next year. Have a dual purpose. Yeah. Monique Hennis is in that majority, not only as a solar energy customer, but also as a solar energy employee. You see, Monique works for the industry's trade association, and she too is asking for federal help. The biggest impact is going to be on the financing side. So having uh, policies that support uh, domestic manufacturing, 
um, and that support the financing. Um, loan guarantee is another program that's been very helpful um, and allows uh, large projects to also access competitive financing options. Now I do want to point out that Monique joined the Solar Association only after she and her family installed those solar panels on their home. Monique tells me she was just so enthusiastic about her turn to clean energy she actually sought out a position within the solar industry to advance the cause she sees as so important.